All right. Welcome to the class. We are here to talk about the Option Omega option strategy backtesting software. So welcome. Super excited to share some of the stuff that we will be sharing today. Uh, this is number two webinar that we've done with uh, with Troy from Option Omega. So back by popular demand. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Make sure you turn off other devices, focus. We've got a ton of good information to share with you today. If you do have questions, just type them in the Zoom chat. Uh, Troy's going to be doing most of the presenting. I'm going to be moderating the chat. So if you have questions that are relevant to what Troy's talking about, I will interject those questions to him, relay those to him. If it's not relevant, we will make sure we answer your question, but we'll probably save it until the end. Uh, also, this presentation will be recorded and the replay will be available by tomorrow morning at the latest. Quick risk disclosure, neither Option, Omega, or Navigation Trading are financial advisors or broker dealers. Any securities used in these examples are for illustrative purposes only. Navigation Trading nor Option Omega is recommending that you buy or sell any security. And we are looking at backtesting. So backtesting past performance does is not indicative of future performance. Investing does involve risk. Options trading may not be suitable for some investors. Make sure you check out the document. Characteristics and risks of standardized options available from your broker and no part of this presentation may be copied, recorded, or brewed or rebroadcast in any form without our prior written consent. Most of you on here today are most likely familiar with navigation trading. Uh, I'll let Troy do his own introduction, but quick background on us. We've been doing options and futures trading education since 2016. Uh, I've personally been trading over 20 years since 1999. We trade based on statistics and probabilities. And what you'll see with this backtesting software, it really enables you to hone in on those statistics and probabilities before making trades with any real money. We also have a podcast called The Trade Hacker Mindset, all about the mental discipline side of trading. You can find that on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. And we also have our trade hacker community on our discord platform. So a couple things before I turn it over to Troy, what are we going to talk about today? Well, we, in our, in our last uh, presentation, which was in October of last year, uh, Troy did a pretty deep dive into the option Omega backtesting platform. So we're going to, we're going to, I'd like Troy to spend just a few minutes kind of going over some of the, some of the, details of the software in general, uh, but really he's going to dive deeper into some of the cool new stuff. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Option Omega, you're able to quickly backtest any option strategy literally in a matter of seconds. And the one thing that really sets Option Omega apart from any other backtesting software is they have intraday data. So you can backtest to the minute, you can backtest intraday strategies, not just end of day. So it's a it's a pretty cool feature. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to have him touch on is the new trade replay feature that I think is really cool when you're trying to analyze uh, specific trades. We're going to talk about some zero DTE stuff, some ratio stuff, uh, trading in different VIX environments, and much more. If you are not a subscriber to Option Omega already, Troy and his team have been uh, generous enough to offer to our community uh, a pretty significant discount. So monthly is usually 99 bucks a month and you can get it for 49.99. Or uh, if you wanna do the annual version, it's usually $600 a year. Our members get it for only 300. So if, you, if you're interested, go to navigationtrading.com slash Omega. And Landon, if you could type that in the chat, just so it's there, because we're going to move off here, but navigationtrading.com slash Omega. And with that, I will turn it over to you, my friend. Take it out. Take it away, Troy. Thank you so much. I'm, it's an honor to be here again, and I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. Let's see here. This is always the most terrifying part of any presentation to me is making sure we're good. So can you guys see my screen? Looks good. Okay, sweet. 
All right. Well, I appreciate it. Again, it's an honor to be here uh, and talking options and talking back testing, which is obviously something we're passionate about over here at Option Omega. And I know navigation trading is too. So again, thank you. Um, a quick background of me, been trading for about six years now. Uh, yes, yeah, five or six years and um, trading options, that is. And kind of been all over the map with, with trading options. And, and I always like to give a shout out. Navigation was one of the first uh, options places that to me was just the most legit place it could be. I mean, it, they just do a great job of educating. And I'm sure if you're listening to this, you probably already aware of that. So big shout out to Navigation Trading because they are definitely an OG in this space. So we started trading, uh, me and uh, I, I was a software engineer and my buddy Rusty and I, uh, worked in the same office together and we would just talk options all day long and started trading options. And our other partner, Matt, uh, one of Rusty's good friends, we, we all talk together and talk options and things like that. And we wanted to figure out a way to do probabilistic uh, trading. Just, and that's the benefit of kind of the options uh, environment is you can trade uh, neutral strategies. And that's really what we were interested in. And so we set about looking to trade uh, neutral strategies, and we came across backtesting, and we thought, man, this is going to be awesome. And we started using some different backtesters, and we found, uh, me personally, I found the strategy, and I was like, man, I'm going to be a zillionaire in like six months with this thing. It's just crazy. And I put some trades on according to what the, the backtester said maybe their parameters should be, and uh, lo and behold, they did not match the parameters of the backtest. And what we realized afterwards, and uh, after losing some money, which is always the quickest way to learn things, uh, I realized that the most back testers use what's called end of day data. And so what they're doing is they're taking a snapshot, and it's usually at 3.50 p.m. Um, before the market gets all wonky. Uh, they take a snapshot at 3.50 p.m., and whatever the price is at 3.50 p.m., that is the day's price. That is the day's trade. They, If you put on the trade, they're going to look at it the next day at 3.50 p.m. basically. And what I realized through that is that we were not getting really accurate fills. If you, if you look at a day like today, uh, you know, January 19th, there was just wild swings in the market uh, throughout the day. Uh, and so you're not getting Real, realistic fills, or realistic uh, data, in our opinion. And so what we attempted to do is set about trying to figure that out because we were software engineers and we, we're cocky as people, software engineers. And so we figured we could solve it. And it's a very, very hard problem, but we feel like we've done a pretty good job of being able to solve it. And the solving of it was uh, intraday data using one minute data. And the reason most people don't use one minute data is it's very, very intense from a computational standpoint. Um, but, uh, and I'll shout out to my partner, Rusty, he's kind of the chief software engineer. He's just a genius and, and was able to make it, anybody can do it, but can you do it fast? And, and that's something we're very proud of is that it's pretty snappy. So uh, we set about, uh, launched it last March, March of 22. And um, it's been just a super fun ride so far. And we've learned a ton from it. We built it for ourselves. We built it as our own tool. And um, we quickly realized this might be something that other people could use as well. So um, with that being said, I will just jump in and I'm not looking at the chat. So if there's any questions or anything like that, just let me know, okay? Yep, I've got you. Okay, I appreciate it. So this is the dashboard uh, of Option Omega when you're logged in. And this will show you uh, your test. And you can see it in a card format or a table format. Um, I'm a nerd, so I go towards table format. Um, but what is a back test? What is a test? Well, what we're looking at in general is we want to test different strategies and see how they would do through time in a mechanical way. And so I will just create a, a new back test real quick and we'll just go quickly through it again. Um, there, we have a lot of resources that you can see if you have any questions about how to set up a back test, we have a lot of resources, but I'll move quickly just to kind of give you an overview. So we go back to 2013 and we use one minute data and you can, we have some quick little, you know, 
common things. Everybody wants to test the COVID crash. Everybody wants to test year to date, things like that. Uh, but otherwise, you can go back to 2013. And the tickers we have are SPX, SPY, IWM, and QQQ. And we get a ton of requests for different tickers all the time, and we're very sympathetic to it. The reason we've started with these is these by far are the most liquid options uh, available, uh, these indices. And so uh, we feel like, you know, trading IWM is a good proxy for RUT, whereas you might be able to test some things out. RUT's, I love RUT, I've traded RUT a ton, but RUT is very difficult to backtest just from a liquidity standpoint. So those are our tickers. And we have some common strategies that you can do. And I'll just do one here real quick just to show you how this works. But these are common strategies. And if you look down here at this colorful little Christmas tree, um, these are each individual option legs. And so if you look at an iron fly, change it to an iron condor, you can notice that things are changing. The legs are changing. And we can do that for you, or you can do it yourself. So you could um, just exit out of that and you could create your own strategy. So you could say, I want to sell a put, a five delta put uh, that's 10 days out. And you could do just that. You could also say, I want to do it, uh, not a delta based on delta, but percentage out of the money. So I want to do it like 10% uh, out of the money, which would be huge, but, or 1% out of the money, right? Or something like that. You could also do um, fixed premium. So you could say for like credit targeting, you could say, I don't care about the deltas. I want to sell a put where I can receive uh, $2 credit. So I only put this on if I'm receiving $2 of credit. Um, or you can do a strike offset. You could say, uh, I just want to sell something 50 points away, you know, to the downside. So there's a lot of different ways you could do it. Um, but, you know, the way I usually trade is just Greeks. So I do Delta and things like that, but there's tons of different ways, obviously. So let's just say you want to sell, let's just say a 20 Delta, a 20 Delta put 10 days out. You can then create a spread if you want. And there's a couple of different ways to create a spread. If you wanted to do it based on Delta or something like that, you could buy the spread and say, I want to sell a 20 Delta put and buy a five Delta, uh, buy a five Delta put. Um, so therefore I'm spreading it out. Or you could say this little button, which is my favorite button of Option Omega, the link button. And what that does is it will link this child to the parent. So then we can say, okay, I'm selling a 20 Delta put. I wanna buy the put uh, 25 points below that. So making a 25 wide uh, put spread. And there's a couple of different things with that. You can lock it. And the locking it basically says like, we're only gonna put this on if that strike matches. Cause if you've ever traded uh, options of like different times or calendars and things like that, sometimes there's not a strike 25 points away. Um, and I'm moving fast, so slow me down if I need to, but uh, uses that DTE, all that means is basically only put this on if there's a 10 day out contract. Otherwise, we will um, just find this, the closest one to 10 days. So we'll put that on for right now. And allocation is super interesting and produces some really crazy results, fun results to look at. And it's part of, in my mind, I always say allocation is part of the strategy. It's, it's a strategy in of itself. So what you can do is you start with uh, an amount of funds. And so in this instance, we're starting with $100,000. And then you say for each trade, how much of this allocation do I want to put on per trade? So let's say for this, we want to put on 10%. You could then say, especially if this is doing it every day and some aren't closing every day, you might start having quite a few positions on. This max open trades is a way to say basically the biggest my book ever gets is five. I, I only want to ever get it up to five trades open at any given time or something like that, or 20 or whatever you want to do. And if you do that, one thing you could do is you could say, what I want to do is I want to close the oldest trade, win, lose, or draw, when I put a new trade on. And that would be one way to kind of keep it at five 
it, although if you even if you want to keep going. And then the other thing, and this is great for just testing purposes, is you can put contracts per trade. There's two two reasons I use this. You when I want to just see a trade by itself without uh, introducing allocation to it, I'll just do one, and it kind of gives me a good theoretical understanding of the trade itself. The other way I'll use it is if I have a trade that I really, really like um, and it's just doing really well and it's growing exponentially. Well, if you look at the back test, you might end up with like 4,000 trades or, or sorry, 4,000 contracts per trade or something like that as it's exponentially growing. This is a way basically to say like, let's keep it liquid guys. Let's, let's, let's not go crazy. Or like I, I'm a big roller, but I'm, I'm, I don't foresee ever putting on more than 200 contracts per trade or something like that. So you can do it that way. And then it starts getting real. We go down the rabbit hole a little bit. So that's, that's the, the overall kind of uh, structure of the strategy. And now we get into when do you want to put the strategy on? And so you can put it on anywhere from 9.32 to 3.59 uh, in the morning. Actually, it's 9.31, I believe. And you can do it a couple of different ways. You could say, I want to put this trade on daily. Um, so we're just going to put it on every day uh, that the criteria meets. You could say, I want to put it on weekly, meaning like I want to put it on only on Mondays or I'm a Monday, Thursday person. I work. And so those are the only days I could do it. Or you could say, I want to put it on the like third Friday of every month. Like I want to target OPEX. I want to see what, what that would look like. And that's one way you could do it. Or you can put specific dates. So you can whitelist dates that you want to trade. So this is, this is really helpful if you're testing um, like FOMC, which is the equivalent of like Trader Christmas, or at least it was last year, or CPI something like that you can compile those dates and then put them here and then just trade that and see what would have happened you can also use vix the min and max of vix you could say like i only want to put a trade on if vix is over 20 uh or under 20 or you know i only want to put it on if it's under 30 or over 30 you could do it in a couple of different ways like that and then we have some technical indicators we have rsi min and max and then simple moving averages. And so the RSI, you know, if you're familiar with that, you can go ham on that. And then with simple moving, we have a couple of different ways you can do it. You can say like, I wanna do it if it's below the 50 day, or if it's above the 50 day, or I wanna compare it. I wanna say, I wanna see if the 50 day is greater than the uh, 10 day. You can do that too. You can also use gaps. And we have little bullets, so it's always helpful. This gaps are when the market moves a certain percentage from the previous close to the current open. So market closes today. Let's say we gap down 50 points overnight. Um, what you could say is, I want to, I want to see what would happen when we open 50 points down. I only want to open trades up when we open 50 points down. I want to test that. Um, or you could say 50, but I don't want to go crazy. Like, what's between 50 and 100? Or you could say, like, hey, I want to see what happens on a day when it's up uh, 20 points. And you see this percentage, I'm saying in points, but you can also do a percentage. So you could say, like, uh, a gap down of 1%, max gap down of 2%. Or with points, a mini gap up of 20, a max gap up of 50. And you could do it that way. You can also test according to intraday movement. Uh, so you trade when the market moves a certain percentage from the opening price to the current price. So we opened up and then we gap down 50. What happens on an intraday gap of 50? I want to test that. Well, you can do that using intraday movement. And then we have a fun one if you're familiar with squeeze metrics, um, which you can go to their website. It's, it, they've got some crazy cool stuff. It's not worth explaining right now, but basically they look at... Uh, instead of uh, think about instead of terms of like VIX uh, range for the day, they have some metrics that kind of put that in a gamma environment. So a gamma move, gamma move for the day or, or points based on gamma and things like that. So you can definitely play around with that and look that up more. So then we get into the thing of when are we gonna take this off? 
what are we going to do? And we have a couple of different things. You can do a profit target, either based on percentage, a fixed price, or a closing order. So for instance, the closing order is like, I know I'm selling credit spreads, and I know I'm collecting $2 per spread because I set it up that way. I'm going to set a closing order for a dollar, and I want to test that. Well, you can. Same thing with stop loss. You could say, I want to base it on a dollar, or I want to base it on a percentage of premium or a closing order. And then we have these things that are pretty cool uh, called trailing stop. And I'm not going to get into trailing stop because there's a couple of different ways that people calculate it. But basically, the, the, the effect is um, you set a stop, and after a percentage profit, um, you can, the, the, or yeah, or a fixed loss, the, it starts, the profit starts moving, the stop starts moving. And so if you've ever traded and sold like a credit spread or something like that, and you, or a debit spread or anything, and you started locking in profit, you know, let's say it went up 200 bucks or whatever, and you made, you're up 200 bucks, maybe you start uh, ratcheting it up to the max, the stop loss now is like, you're gonna make $100. Well, trailing is similar, and some brokerages have that built in, some don't. Uh, but basically, how it works is at a fixed uh, profit target, the trail starts moving. Um, the other cool thing you can do is use profit actions, and profit actions are crazy because what you can do is you can say, okay, at 10% profit of this trade, I want to close 50% of my allocation, and I want to adjust the stop to um let's see if it was a dollar 50 or 1.5 percent now i want to adjust it to 0.05 percent right and then i want to say at 20 percent profit i want to close the other 50 percent and we're done there so i don't need to adjust it and so you can you can test taking profits which we think is super helpful if you've ever traded you know multiple contract trades at any point we've all kind of wondered about that especially if we've had a profit and then lost it. I'm sure in the back of our heads, we've always wondered like, I wonder if we just started like scaling out of this, what it would look like. Well, we try to allow you to do that or at least test that. So then we have exit conditions. Uh, this is profit and loss is an exit condition, but we have more. So you can say, I wanna use an early exit. I wanna say this is a 10 day trade. Max, I wanna, I wanna exit five days out. I don't wanna, I don't wanna deal with gamma the last five days. So I'm just going to get out. Or you can say, and this is useful for like zero day trades, especially say you put it on at 9.32, you say, I want to get out at 11 a.m. I, I don't want to, I don't want to um, play around. I just want to get out at 11 a.m. and see what would happen. You can test that. Same indicators as before. So you can test according to the min and max and the simple moving averages, getting out based on those. Um, you can also exit when your short is a, a percentage or points from the underlying. And so this isn't useful for calendars or flies or things like that, but it is useful for when you're selling premium. So you have a short strike and you want to test what happens if it's within a certain amount of points from the short strike. You can test that. You can also test if it just moves, <laughs> which is helpful. So like, for instance, if you put like a butterfly on and say it's like a 15 day butterfly. And uh, it's like 60, po 60 points wide, 60 point wide butterfly. Well, you could say, all right, I want to get out if it just moves 60 points. Basically saying like, if it gets to the longs, I just want to get out. Um, you could also test that. And then this is my favorite and least favorite section. This is called the miscellaneous section. I call it the pain section. Because what this is, is we want to try to make these tests as real as possible. And so we allow you to add commissions and fees to your test. And you can also add slippage to your test. And we just added stop loss slippage as well. So, um, you know, if you've ever <laughs> taken a stop loss before, you know that you don't get what you want all the time or usually. So we have that set up as well. You can also ignore trades with a wide bid ask spread. So if something's too good to be true, it usually is. And that we're, we're we have found that these indices that we use are pretty liquid but there's definitely times where you would want to check that so if you're testing covid crash i guarantee you that the uh, bid and ask got super wide got over 100 basis points 
Um, and so you, you might want to test that or you might want to look at that just to double check your um, position and see what the test would have done if maybe those crazy moves hadn't happened. You know, that's the way you could do it. Uh, close open trades on test completion basically means like when the test is done running. So we're running this like for four years or whatever, how long we want to run it. Uh, if there's still trades on, say we're trading like 45 day calendars or something. When the test is done, if there's still trades on, just close those, win, lose, or draw. Uh, these two are, the, are theoretical and I actually have a test I wanna show you some of this. So there's reasons for it and reasons not to do it. Uh, cap non-opening profits at the profit target basically says, hey, something went your way, hallelujah. We, we did it, we had a good fill. What this says is uh, don't take it. Let's just see what would happen if we just hit our profit target, if we didn't go uh, over it. Now we will obviously do it with like opening because if there's a gap or something, it'd just be unrealistic to not have that off. Same thing with stop loss. You can say, I think I can discretionarily do this better than the test. So I wanna just leave this at a stop loss, cap it just to see if this test is viable or not. And there's reasons to do that and reasons to not, like I said. Uh, same thing here. You can do require two consecutive hits at the profit target. So you, you're only exiting trades when the max profit is hit for two consecutive time, time intervals. So what is that? It's basically saying like, no, this was a real fill. Or we think that we think this there's a good chance that this actually would have got filled through time. Um, and then same thing for the stop loss. You could say like, I, I wanted to hit the stop loss twice. And again, these are punishers, so I like to hit the profit, I like to do the profit target, but not the stop loss. You can also use min max entry premium. Um, and what that is basically is you, you're looking for, um, it's basically a way to look for a, a specific uh, price. So you say, I wanna trade, I wanna receive $1 on my spreads. This is a way to say, don't open this trade unless I receive a dollar from my spreads, right? Uh, Again, just trying to make it more realistic. The short long ratio basically is the longs the shorts. And it's a way, it's a it's a way of we're trying to get at is is the price cheap. So for instance, for like buying uh buying premium or like doing calendars or any time spreads, are your shorts in this uh ratio are they basically cheap according to the longs or are they expensive according to the longs? Um Blackout days are similar to whitelist days. So for instance, I said above, if you wanted to test CPI, but maybe your trade is like, I'm never gonna trade CPI. Over my dead body would I trade CPI. I'm out that day, I go fishing that day. Well, you can put those dates in here and it, the test won't run on those days. So you can sleep easy. And then this is an interesting feature for people who are selling spreads throughout the day. It's gotten really popular zero day stuff lately. And so this is basically saying, if a trade, if I get stopped out via profit or because of actual stop loss, I wanna put the trade back on. And we give you some metrics to do that. You can say like, do you wanna, what conditions do you want? Do you wanna delay the re-entry? Do you want to re-enter if it's before a certain time of day? Do you wanna not re-enter if it's a, after a certain time of day? And so, as you can see, there's a lot to it. And it makes for a lot of fun times <laughs> figuring out what is a good strategy. So I don't even remember what we did up here, but we'll just run this just to see a 50% profit target, 1.5% stop loss. I didn't put enough money on it. Hold on real quick. Oh, actually I didn't do this. Let me cancel out of that. I had something going on before there, but it'd be easier just to show you one of the results here. Um, so that's, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, are there any questions about that? I know I moved super fast, but we can look at some results and kind of show you what, what, what all that looks like when it comes together. No questions yet. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, here are four tests and I thought it'd be interesting just to look at some different environments, some different things that ways to test depending on who you are and what you do and all this stuff they can result in some wildly different results so first off is this two-day 
iron condor. And so I'm gonna go through the results and just show you what we do here. So we give you the underlying, we give you the dates that you ran it, and then we show you the legs that you were running during this test. And then we show you all your entry conditions. So in this case, this is a two day iron condor. And it takes a minute to look at this, but once you, once you get it, you get it, trust me. So you're selling a 25 delta uh, put and you're buying the long 50 points below it. And then this one is a little different. You're selling a 50 delta call, so an at the money call, and you're buying the, a long 50 points above that. So it's a 50 wide condor, but the delta, you're not gonna be delta neutral on open because the deltas are skewed uh, short because your call is at the money and your short, your short calls at the money and your short put is tw at 25 delta. So obviously this worked really, really well last year. Why would it work really, really well last year? Because we just went down. <laughs> I mean, it won 85% of the time, but would it work every year? I don't know. And this is the thing that with Option Omega that I've learned so much about just trading in general. I went into this, we, we all went into this, Rusty and Matt and I saying, all right, let's find the trade that works throughout time, the 2013 to 2022 trade. And they, they're there. I, I, I promise you there's gold in those hills. But what's far more interesting to us is you can definitely see that overall option strategies change through time and there's different landscapes and different environments to do certain things. And so, you know, a trade like this where it's an at the money call on a 25 delta put, people are saying, you know, should you do this? Well, A, I'm not telling you to do anything because options and fall risks, but, you know, it's an interesting idea if you are, if you have go into a trade saying, I am neutral to short the market. This might be, an, but I still want to collect premium. I still want to collect theta. Um, I'm still a theta trader at heart. Maybe this is something to look at that's interesting. And so you put this trade on at 945 and we do it every day and we do it only when there's two day expirations. Um, so we're not putting anything on uh, usually Fridays with this. And we're allocating 50% of our portfolio. And I always tell people, you should never allocate 50% of your portfolio to any. You know, I'm not a financial advisor. That's just my opinion. Uh, options involve risks. Uh, but it's interesting to test the allocation with it. And so we put that on for this reason. And with this, like I said, I like to keep it real as much as I can. And so I'm saying, I don't care how big it gets. I'm not going to do more than 100 contracts per trade. And we'll, we'll go through here in a second and show you maybe what that would look like if you didn't. And so this trade is actually really simple. The exit condition, I'm only get out only if I either hit the profit target or it's the next day. Those are my exit conditions. I either get out for 10% or I exit the trade the next day by 11 a.m. or at 11 a.m. And then for the miscellaneous, I put two and a half bucks for opening fees. You know, each brokerage is different. I like to test different things. And so for this one, it's just opening fees are two and a half dollars. And so that's kind of this at a nutshell. We show you the P&L, we show you the CAGR, the uh, compound annual growth rate. We show you your max drawdown during the trade. And we show you a MAR ratio. MAR ratio is basically CAGR um, divided by your drawdown. So it's a way of a ratio to look at how good was this trade your CAGR compared to what your drawdown was in the trade. Your win percentage is you're winning 85% of the time. Um, this is basically a premium capture info. So we basically say, okay, this year and this past year, if you would have ran this test, you would have sold $32 million in options premium. And you captured or you collected, you collected that you captured this much, you kept 4.4% of that. And then we show you your starting capital, where you started and then where you ended up. Then we give you some averages, what your average trade was, what your average winner, your average loser, 
your max winner, your max loser. Obviously, these are big numbers because it's sequential through time, right? It's uh, it's growing exponentially because of our allocation. The average days in trade, this is really useful, especially one, two, three day trades to show you how long you're in it. On average, we're in it less than one day. And we put on 137 and we won 117. And then down here, we give you some, basically just a quick summary view of it, of like a year to date, which again, this is one year, so it's not super useful for that. But if you're going back multiple years, it's useful. Um, your return versus your max drawdown. And then we show you your funds by date. And then we get into something really useful. We get into what each trade did. And so I'll show you yesterday's. We basically update our data every night in the middle of the night. So today's action in the stock market, you'll be able to test it tomorrow. So we're one day behind the market basically. And so this trade yesterday, we put on at 9.45 AM when the opening price was at 4,003 and we sold a hundred. Now, why are we starting with a hundred? Because this is, uh, descending. We could ascend it and start with January of last year. And you can see we started with four contracts, but I'm showing you the latest. So we're, we've made it up to 100 in our allocation. But each contract, we collected $2,200 roughly in credit. The market went down. And because this is a, uh, it is a uh, short delta trade, that worked pretty well in the sense that in one hour, we hit our profit target of 10%. And that was it. We also show you what your max loss was during that point. So at some point in that trade, you were down 6%. And that's super helpful too, when you're looking through these things and trying to figure out like, okay, what should I test for a stop loss? It's really helpful to be able to go through the trade log and say like, oh, okay, it's 12%. Let's see here, 33%, 68%. You know, it gives you a good way to look at eh, maybe 10%. I want to just cut it. I don't want those to be, I don't want, I don't want to take big losers like that. Um, and then we show you what your max profit was as well. So that's helpful as well. And then we just came out last month with a way to dive deeper because if you look at this, this is every trade and that's super useful. Right, And if you do this for uh, nine years or 10 years now, I guess, because it's 2013, if you go back a decade, you're gonna have a lot of these suckers. And it's, it's helpful to see, it's helpful that you can actually see the different environments changing through time, even in the trade, lo trade logs, if you run it back in 2013. Um, but this right here is something we came up with last month and it dives into that individual trade and we call it trade replay. And basically what it does, is it so it shows you each date um, or each hour, depending on how short term it is, that you are in the trade, and we show you the premium. And obviously, if you're if you're selling premium, you want the premium to go down. If you're buying premium, you want the premium to go up. So we can look at the underlying SPX here and what VIX was doing all along. And yesterday, so it's super interesting, right? It's we jump in. We're going uh, up, our premium is rising. It makes perfect sense that that would happen, right? Uh, VIX kind of is staying put. VIX isn't doing much during the lifetime of this trade. Um, and then right around here, we have this, uh, my little Zoom thing is blocking it, but I can't see what time that is, but uh, I'm guessing around 10.25, 10.15, 10.25. 10 10 we have the drop and then your premium starts dropping. It rises again on that first kind of push higher. And then obviously if you were trading yesterday, you saw we just, we just continue to go down all day. So within an hour you were out. And you can do that with each one. You can do that going back to however long the trade is. So um, go to ascending here. Our first trade in this uh, back test, January 3rd of last year, what were we doing? Well, we put it on and almost immediately 
uh, we were profitable that day. VIX was rising as well. And so that's super helpful. The VIX underlying and the trade mixed together in a chart, seeing that through time, it's really helpful with spreads, put selling, but it's also super helpful with um, debit spreads and or uh, calendar spreads, because you can see what the VIX is doing through time and you can kind of get a sense of, okay, in our mind, it's a teaching tool. You, you, you learn about double calendars, you say, okay, I see what's happening. VIX went up and my profit's increasing. Okay, theoretically, I get that. But let's actually look at a trade that, you, that the back test put on and see what happened there. So we found that very useful. Uh, people seem to like it a lot, which we're thankful for. And you can go through this pretty quickly. You know, there's ways to, to go through these. Um, you can also filter it by winners or by losers only. Hey, Troy, can I and interrupt then, you for a second? Please, yeah. I was just going to, going back to the trade replay, you know, I've, I've been testing kind of an inverse or a long iron condor strategy. And, and another example of, of where this can kind of help you from a psychological standpoint is, you know, that that's a trade where sometimes, you know, if you can visualize it, it's got a big valley where you, you'll have a loss if it's, if it, if price just kind of stays stagnant. And so what you'll notice on something like that is, you know, it may be showing a loss for the majority of the day, but then right at the end, if the market makes a move, it it becomes a winner at the end of the day. So that's important to understand because yeah. if you mentally cannot handle that type of scenario where you're losing most of the day and then at the end of the day, it becomes a winner, then that may not be a trade for you, even though it back tests well. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah, I couldn't say it better myself. That's Another way that happens is when you look at a trade like this and someone says, okay, this is an awesome trade, man. Obviously, you know, everyone starts with this, which is maybe not always the thing you should look at, but you start with 85% win rate and you say like, oh, that's awesome. That draw and the drawdown's not bad at all. Well, yeah, theoretically it's not bad at all, but can you handle a 32% drawdown in your account? Like, is, is that something that you would be able to do? Some people say, yeah, some people say no. It's important to be able to at least figure that out in real time. And I think to your point, trade replay kind of helps you go a little bit deeper with, okay, I really would be losing money like by the hour right here until the end of the day. You know, So maybe this is a trade for me, maybe it's not. Um, so that, that's the results in a nutshell. But just to show you a quick, this is a hundred contracts per trade. What would happen if we, took that off. We took off 100 contracts per trade and we just let it go. This is where it gets super, super intriguing to me because, and this is the point of allocation percentage. Again, remember our, our previous, and, and this is one thing that we can look at here. This is our recent runs that we've done, right? Um, that shows you kind of the, the recent ones you've done. But if you look at this, okay, we've made 19, you know, 900000 theoretically. But we have a much, much bigger drawdown, a much bigger drawdown, all right? If you look at this graph, you have some rough times uh, towards the end of the year, it looks like, last year. Um, if you just do what is the equivalent of, you know, you can do the math, but 343 contracts versus 100. So, so this is the thing that you're, that, that's super interesting is, okay, capping it at 100 reduces your drawdown, reduces your P&L, but it out reduces your drawdown. And it, not every trade's like that, but it's, but it's really useful to test allocation like that, to say, I only ever want to put 100 on. I don't ever want to get to 4 million or whatever. Um, you can also say, uh, something to the effect of like, okay, I only want to do a hundred per trade, but I want to get there quicker. So I want to allocate a hundred percent of my portfolio. Again, don't do this, but we can test it. We can see what would happen. Super interesting. Almost the same result, almost the same result going a hundred percent with the capping. Again, these are just little things as you trade that you and you back test that you start to realize like oh okay so 
really how much I'm allocating does make a huge percentage. Again, let's turn that off. We were at 1,900,000 went before without that. But if we're doing 100% of our allocation, you don't get any more money, but you do get a much, much scarier drawdown at 100% allocation. So I find that very interesting because I'm a nerd and I like to look at this stuff all day. Uh, but let's return that back to, uh, let's say that was 10%. And I'm going to say right now, we're just going to do one, which ignores everything I just put in. So we're just going to do one contract just for testing purposes. And so this really gets, this is where it gets helpful is with one, two, if you're removing the allocation, because then the averages kind of start showing themselves a little clear. The average winner of this trade is 330. The average loser is 800. So you're obviously losing a lot more than you win, but you win a lot more than you lose, if that makes sense. Uh, it's like a Yogi Berra. Almost did a Yogi Berra there with that. So that's some of that's that first test. And it's interesting. It's a condor, basically. Go back to it. It's a two-day iron condor that's a call, 50 delta call at the money and a 25 delta put. Uh, and then they're 50 point wide. So it's a 50 point wide condor, but it's skewed. Um, and if you're in uh, the chat real quick, I can, if it's helpful, if you're a member Option Omega, if you can, if you belong to Option Omega, you can see this basically. And if you don't, you can't, but I'll put it in there just for anybody who uh, wants to look at it. So, that's that one. Super interesting. Again, should you run that throughout time? I don't know if you should run that throughout time. I don't know much of anything, but I think it's very interesting. And I know if I was short deltas, it, it'd be very interesting. So this is the second one. And this one's my personal favorite, not just because of the PL, but just because of my style. So um, I trade double calendars a lot. I love double calendars. Um, I love the idea of being long Vega and long Theta. And so that's my personal opinion. And what this is, is a five-year look at one trade. And this trade is very, very simple. Basically, going back to 2017, every Monday at the end of the day, 3.50 p.m., we're going to sell the two-day out and buy the four-day out uh, options. We're going to sell the two-day out 20 delta put, sell the two day out 15 delta call, and then buy the same strikes, making it a calendar four days out. And we're allocating 25% of our portfolio. And our profit target is 40% on this trade. We want 40%, or we want to get out at 9.45 the day that the shorts are zero day. So the day of expiration for the shorts. Or we want to get out when it's 15, past, 15 points past our strikes. So 15 points above the calls or 15 points below the puts. Those are our criteria. Uh, we're requiring two profit target hits. We're capping the profits. So we're being really conservative here. And personally, I love this test. This is like one of my favorite tests. Um, and it just kind of shows the, the a couple things to me, you know, we say all the time there's different environments. I just showed you that with the, with the condor, there are definitely different environments. But there are also some trades that just kind of like slow and steady wins the race. They just kind of work sometimes. And uh, this is one of those to me that is uh, pretty helpful of just remembering, like remembering things of like, oh, should I be, what, what's the right trade to put on? There's sometimes you can get into analysis paralysis. I like this trade a lot because it's like, well, if you just would have done this the last five years, theoretically, you did pretty well, right? And again, I'll show you the trade replay just because it, it is pretty interesting. Oh, and one thing just to show you, this is not using the cap. So, you know, are you putting on 5,700 of these? No, no way. So let's just try to make it realistic.
So this one takes a little bit longer. It goes back five years. And we try to average these out to where like five years is 30 seconds. It depends on what you're doing, but we think it's pretty fast for what it does. Five years and 30 so, seconds. That's pretty good. Yeah, we try. We try. So, you know, you're not 27 million, but still, I don't think anybody's sad. You know, I don't think anybody's mad about this one. And to show you the trade replay on this, this is this week. So you put this on, actually, sorry, this was last week because my, the market was closed Monday and this is exact DTE. And so because the market was closed this Monday, last past Monday for MLK day, uh, we didn't put a trade on. Um, and it didn't try to adjust to the next day because we used the Zach DTE. I only put it on Mondays if there's a Monday. So this is the previous week. But you can see, very, very interesting. The VIX is going down, right? And the market is going up. All the really like classic criteria for a double calendar not working, right? Theor theoretically, it could work, but like realistically, if you trade double calendars, you don't want to hear that. Like, all right, I'm gonna put this double calendar on and like, it's gonna just rally 50 points and VIX is going to go down, you know, quite a few percentage, nothing crazy, but definitely still rolling down. That's really helpful to see. It's really helpful to see like, okay, well that worked. Well, it, it went on at three to 940. Let's see where our strikes were. Ah, okay. Our calls were 39.55. So what was happening? It reached kind of our tent of profit. Even though IV was falling, it still reached our profit because or the specific, we exited at the specific time, but it was profitable because we got into the range of profitability for it. This would definitely be like a tent in the middle sagging type trade when you lose. Like it, if it just does nothing and VIX collapses, you know, this is a good example, October 24th. You put it on at 37.98, you took it off 30 points later, you're, you're way below your strikes because the VIX was so high. So VIX is starting up way up here and we're going way down there. And even though there's a price drop, it just wasn't enough because you started with VIX and therefore you started with your, your um, range being very wide. And so there was just nothing you could do than that. So anyway, I really like this trade. I'm going to save this and show you how this works. So because this is a saved trade, I'm just going to replace it because I, I changed it to where it's 100 uh, max contracts now instead of um, unlimited. So I'm just going to save that. And I will put that. Oh, I'm bad at Zoom here. Let's see here. I'm putting that in the chat. Okay. So two more tests real quick. How are we doing on time? Am I am I going to slow? All good. Okay, sweet. I'll do two real quick. So this is a ratio uh, that one of our members in our Discord community uh, shared. And it's not his test per se. It's kind of based around the idea. And I'm going to show you two versions of it real quick. So if you traded options for a while, you know that put uh, there's usually a put skew and therefore a put premium is usually more expensive than call premium. Usually there's some caveats to that, but in the indexes, especially put premium is usually more expensive. So what this is doing is it's basically trying to test a theory. And I always tell people with back testing, I'm not looking for the perfect trade. I'm looking for really good ideas. And so this is just an idea. And what it is, is it goes back three years. It goes back to basically the COVID crash. And it starts in the COVID crash and it goes to yesterday. And what we're doing is we're selling two 40 Delta zero day puts. And we're buying two puts 50 points below that. And then we're selling one call, uh, call 40 Delta zero day. And we're buying a call below that. So this is kind of, think of this as like a condor, but it's ratioed. We have a two to one. The puts are two to calls one. And it's zero day. And we open the trade first thing in the morning, every day, 
using exact DTE, obviously, because it's zero day. We're using the exact strike offsets, meaning basically that like uh, it has to match the strikes that we want. We're allocating 25% of our portfolio. Again, don't, don't do that unless you know what you're doing. Uh, and maybe even then don't do it. I don't know. But, and then this is the key. This is the key for this test, which is interesting. Because this, again, this is an idea test. This isn't like one, I, I would never say do any of these tests, but particularly these last two, uh, I, these are theoretical tests. These are ideas that I find interesting. We only put this trade on if the market overnight opens, it basically opens down at least one point. So what are we doing? We're basically saying like, we, we only put this on when the market has opened down for the day. And our exit condition is 50% profit target or a $2 stop loss. So we either lose $2 or we make 50%. Those are our, our criteria. We have some opening fees. We put slippage on the stop loss because we're gonna get stopped out a lot on this trade, as I'll show you. As you can look at the win percentage, you don't win a lot in this trade and yet it's profitable. Therefore, it's a weird idea that's worth maybe thinking through. The key of this one is that you're re-entering the trade after you exit. And I'll show you again what that looks like. So way down here, we're re-entering the trade. If we hit our profit target, we put it on again. If we hit our stop loss, we put it on again. And we're gonna do that all day unless it's after 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. That's our criteria. And so what happens is you get stopped out all the time. You have a huge drawdown and yet uh, it's profitable. It persists. And so what do I take away from that? What I take away from that basically is that there's different ways to do this with premium that can play with skew. This is, it's almost like a weird option specific thing to where you're really just targeting skew in this in some ways. And just to show you kind of the trade replay of like a loss. Uh, on this loss, you got stopped out on the call side, which is funny because that means it really, really rallied basically uh, because the two to one buys you a little bit more room. It's a little bit delta uh, positive delta trade. Like you're starting out with some positive deltas, but the way, but you're still negative gamma. So you can flip over and still get stopped up on the call side eventually. And that's what happened here. Um, in a similar way, that was funny because it just happened so fast. Um, sometimes you gotta go back. You put this on at 2.49 PM, you got stopped out two minutes later. Now, why'd you get stopped out two minutes later? Because it's 2.49 PM and you, the range of profitability is very, very small at this point, right? You're putting it on eleven, uh, $11 profit, right? For, for a lot of risk at that point, theoretical risk, because we're getting stopped out. But you just do that all throughout the day, and yet you persist. Is this my favorite trade? Not, certainly not. Is it super interesting in a way that perhaps this is a really, really good view of what, how put skew works in SPX? I think it is. I will show you the final one. So again, that one was, you just put it on if the market opens down at least one point. Obviously you could put that, there's 4 million ways you could test that, but that's the, the first one. This one. Hey, Troy, before you jump into that one, I uh, just want to answer sure. a couple of questions in the chat. Sure. Uh, Ram asked, does it capture the max heat a trade took for profitable trades? And yeah, if you... Uh, maybe you didn't see before, but either on the trade log on the two right-hand columns shows max loss, max profit throughout the trade. So you can see it there or the trade replay that Troy had uh, had displayed. So if you didn't catch that part, maybe you, you can watch the recording. But yes, you can see throughout the entire trade uh, where the profit and loss came in, max heat, max profit, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. And then the, the one other question is... Um, Peeps fan says, can you test the performance of an indicator or set of indicators? And maybe you missed that as well, but um, he, uh, Troy displayed, there's some moving averages and a couple other things that, that can be used. 
Yeah, we have currently we have RSI, minimax, and the, you have simple moving averages where you can do uh, compare them or below and above them. Uh, it's one of our top uh, kind of feedback that we get, requests that we get, and um, can't make any promises, but just say that it is something that we are um, thinking through and working through a little bit. So. And and without going into too much detail, Troy, taking too much time, you also have the ability to upload sp uh, a spreadsheet of potential trade signals, correct? Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Thank you for saying that. So yeah, a lot of people use indicators in their in their trading. And so they might use TradingView or, or different charting platform. We can, you can actually now, uh, you can, you can actually create an upload and we have a ton of documentation how to do this because it has to be specific. But basically there's a way now that where you can import entry times and exit times of where looking back through history, your trades would have, you would have wanted to take trades. So for instance, if you have a, um, oh, let's say you, you're using some, um, some proprietary thing that you created, let's say, and you have a, a back test and trading view or something that's like the data is there for like, a year of when I wanted to go long or short in the market. Well, you can actually now use Option Omega by uploading that. And what you do with it is you can do it a couple of different ways. And there's actually a ton of videos. It's actually kind of complicated because there's a lot to it. But basically, in effect, is if you have custom indicators and things like that, you can actually test that. There's ways possible now to test an Option Omega, um, your custom signals. and you can do it using your own strikes when you wanted to enter, or you can do it based on like, I wanna put on this type of strategy at this point. So you can base it on time, or you can base it on like when to get long and things like that. Very cool, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Okay, final one. This one's very crazy. I put this at one contract because I just wanted to start with the theoretical. So this is very similar to the same thing, but I want to show you, I want to show you um, like why ideas can be really interesting, even though if they don't result in a good back test or why a good back test might not be good ideas and how you, you might have to figure that out. So this is, I won't tell you which one this is either. So basically this is very similar to the last one, except for we're selling a four to one ratio, right? And it's 25 delta, four of them, and then a hundred away. And then a 40 delta, just one 40 delta call, 225. Now, why are you doing the 100 and 225? Basically that's simulating for those who don't have the margin. It's simulating um, basically selling a naked um, strangle. That, that's how that's working is it's a way in your brokerage that people use it just sell them far out to just simulate uh negative strangles now here's the caveat to that uh it's not that simulated because you can take huge losses so i wouldn't i wouldn't advise doing that you know unless you know really know what you're doing but this trade is four to one ratio and you're selling trade you're opening at 9 32 in the morning you're doing it every day and you're allocating 100% of your portfolio. So this is crazy. But the kicker is we're not really allocating 100% of our portfolio because we're ever we're only ever doing one contract at a time. And so the profit, the exit conditions are you're taking a profit target at 50% or you're taking a stop loss at $1.50. And then we're doing that thing that I showed you before, which is we're doing a trailing stop. So after 10% profit, we're going to start trailing our stop up. So it's no longer $1.50. It's dependent on where the price is and what we've locked in. On this one, and this is this is the key. This is the thing to pay attention to, why all of these pain boxes matter. Uh, we have opening fees and slippage and things like that. And we have closed trades on test commissions, and we have cap profits and cap losses. We have required two, price, uh, two profit target hits. And then the same thing as the last one, we're gonna re-enter this over and over, thus the rinse and repeat. But I wanna show you something before we get into the, the kind of theoretical or the, the look of it. A couple of things. 
so this is Wednesday yesterday. And I want you to look at how this works. Because as you can see, we put on in this trade a just crap ton of trades. Starting at, I'm not even going to count it, but starting at 28 uh, at 932, you know, you've put on by 1052, you've put on maybe 10 trades. And then it just keeps going all day long. You're just doing it all day long. You're selling premium, right? Getting stopped out a ton, right? 50% of the time you're getting stopped out. <clears throat> and yet it's profitable, right? with a very small max drawdown. I wanna show you something that's interesting though. This cap losses, again, we cap the losses at the stop loss. I wanna show you what happens when we turn that off for this trade. And this is where each trade really you kind of have to you have to make sure you're not doing the thing that's very human which is overfitting because you look at even like 225 longs 100 shorts you know 100 points uh, long down 225 up that's the perfect ratio this has you know the ability to be curve fitted all around it now here's a fun question why is this taking so long it's taking so long because like I said, each day you're putting on up to like 50, 50, 50 trades a day, right? So removing that one bullion where we get stopped out, you know, we remove, um, we cap the loss at the, the theoretical stop loss. Once we remove the theoretical stop loss, we actually start getting hurt quite a lot with this, right? Why? Well, because real life is happening. That when you're selling spreads like this and the market's moving very fast, yeah, your slippage basically in real life gets very, very big, right? I mean, I've seen people lose a dollar just trying to get out on some of these before. And so it starts looking like that all over the place. And, and the thing with these type of trades is you're not going to get a lot. Like that's actually a pretty good one. Like the underlying is going down, therefore the, the premium's going up you get stopped out, right? And you put it on again, you either get stopped out, you don't get stopped out. Still, you're not winning that much less. You're winning 49% when it was capped. But once you uncap it, uh, it takes a hit. So I just wanted to show you that because I, I wanted to, to, to show the possibilities and really kind of what we're about is we're not trying to find trades to where it looks like you win a billion dollars. I've, I've found those trades and here, and I found those trades in other back testers, but I'm a trader. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in finding a trade that I can have confidence in. And, you know, different trades have different levels of confidence, but the point of back testing is to beat the crap out of it to where you can increase confidence. And so that's what all these are for. That's why all the exit entry conditions, we, we want it to be a confidence builder as much as an educational thing. So with that being said, if there's any other questions I can answer those, otherwise I'll stop sharing and give it back to you. No additional questions coming in yet, but I, I just to kind of reiterate a couple of things, um, you know, I, I think you're right. I mean, as, as traders, we're, we're constantly tweaking and tweaking a back test until we find something that looks awesome, but you, you've got to be really, really careful that you're not curve fitting, that you're not cherry picking, that you're not, because you can, you can always find things that show in a back test, very good results. But like you showed there with the capping, capping your stop losses, just one little tweak, which could be more like real life can really change the back test. So be, you know, be mindful. One thing that I try to do is, if I have a good back test, I actually try to break it. I, I you know, I try to do, yep. I try to make, I try to tweak things and do things of what would I do in real life in this situation uh, and try to, you know, add those things in. So I kind of try to do the opposite of, of what I think a lot of people do. And it really helps you just kind of understand the back testing, understand, um, you know, just try to be reasonable in what, what you would actually be doing uh, in your real trading. 
and and just to to kind of add to that that that's part of the reason you know like we work with educators like navigation because options i mean we say it for for legal purposes but options do involve risk and the thing with options is you absolutely can curve fit things and so at the end of the day you really do need education and we work with educators who are passionate about what they do because you can go into this thing never trading options and keep clicking buttons and you know the saying like the monkey's going to come up with shakespeare eventually but is he really coming up with shakespeare and that's what educators do is they help you realize like oh i've got to get better at a bunch of different things psychology all these things before i can really make this happen and so because even this is the point even a great back test even like a perfect back test uh if you don't have the right mindset if you haven't like been trained in the way of thinking through how options work and and how you should be thinking when you put trades on, you can still just trade it wrong, you know. And so, you can still lose money on it. That's just part of real life. And so, uh, anyway, I just wanted to uh, just kind of hit home that like that's why educators are so important in this space. Great stuff, Troy. Uh, let's see. Tim W says, "Fantastic, Troy. I'm glad you're emphasizing the drawbacks of backtesting compared to real life trading." Yes, sir. Uh, the other thing I, I wanted to mention too is uh, if you are not a member of Option Omega, again, I just put the link. Uh, Troy and his team have been gener generous enough to give our, our community 50% off. Just go to navigationtrading.com slash Omega. And if you have not been in the Option Omega Discord, uh, it's a great community. Um, there's there's It's very active, a ton of people posting, sharing uh trade ideas, sharing back tests, uh, the cool feature that Troy showed, and he shared a couple of back tests here in the chat, is you can literally just click that button, gives you the link that you can share, you can get feedback on it. Uh, a lot of people will post a back test and, and say, hey, what are your what are your thoughts on this? You know, how can I make it better? Or is this realistic? You know, all those different things. So it's just a, it, it's a great community. And I'd highly encourage anyone who is is really serious about trading to get uh, get active uh, not only on the on the software but also in the option omega discord appreciate that but other than that i guess troy i mean you just you did just a very thorough job we are just not getting many questions so kudos to you oh no i appreciate it i it, it's it's fun to talk through this stuff and i'm always there is so much to it that i'm always afraid i left i did leave a bunch of stuff out didn't even talk about portfolios and things like that but um no, I appreciate you having me on. It's always a joy. Yeah, and we have a we have a channel in our Discord uh, called the Backtesting Channel, and and Troy and Rusty are uh, jumping there from time to time to answer questions as well. So you can just tag him in our Discord as well in the Backtesting Channel, and uh, they're very responsive. Uh, you know, there's there's three of them. See, there's only one of me, guys. There's three of them, so you can just pound them with questions all you want. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Andrew K says, why does the allocation make such a big difference in strategy performance? Well, that's not necessarily, um, a, a back testing thing. That's more, um, I would point you towards, uh, there's a book that's really, it's one of my favorite books. It's called fortunes formula and it's about the Kelly criterion. And basically the, the thing that people don't take into account with allocation is that allocation in of itself is a strategy. And so sports bettors have known this for a long time, but I think um, those of us who are perhaps newer to retail trading options uh, haven't really had a chance to see that in action. And so it really can make a huge difference. Uh, the difference between a 50% allocation or a 75% allocation, the difference between a 5% allocation and 10% allocation. And so we allow you to test that just because we think that's part of real life too, is you should know how much you should put towards this trade. Uh, like, in, especially with probabilistic bet, uh, you know, betting like sports betting and things like that, they're, they've done this for years, but, and, and, you know, options aren't betting, but there's a way to think through it with a probability standpoint that it, there's some similarities to how you should put it on and think about what your allocation should be per trade. And uh, Kelly criterion is really good. I know there's some other ways people do it, but uh, personally, my favorite is Kelly, but that that would be my, I would point you towards that. Yeah, and Andrew K, think about this. I mean, if you are allocating 100% of your account, 
you know, and Troy gave some examples of that. And, and obviously he wasn't uh, saying you should ever allocate hundred percent of your account, but maybe you, you know, have a $10,000 balance. So you could back test. What if I was allocating hundred percent of that $10,000 balance or whatever it is. But, but think about this. If you're, if you're allocating a high percentage of your account in a back test and you go through a sizable period, that's a drawdown. Remember you're, you're continuing to ramp up that size. You know, as he showed you, if you can, you can get those contracts escalating up into the hundreds and thousands of spreads put on at one time. And then you go through a drawdown. Well, now you're allocating so much more into a negative period. And so, so of course you're going to see a massive drawdown in that case. Whereas had you kept your number of contracts or a smaller percentage of your allocation more steady, uh, that drawdown is just going to be a little bit of a blip on that graph instead of a big valley. Well, uh, Troy, what was that book again? Uh, it's called Fortune's Formula. Uh, it's a it's a good one. It doesn't. It's not. It reads like a. Uh, it kind of reads like a mystery novel in some ways, but it's it's kind of a biography of um, Edward Thorpe, who uh, was actually started and he was a. I think he was at Princeton or somewhere, but started as a professor. And, beat the blackjack. He, he figured out black, uh, a way to beat blackjack. And then he moved on to investing and, and he did a lot of work on compounding and, and allocation percentages. Gotcha. Very cool. Yeah. Andrew K. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a side effect of compounding, right? If you, if you're compounding and you're getting bigger and bigger, and then you hit the drawdown and you know, it's just, it's kind of the sequence of returns too, that, that comes into play there. So, and that's what, that's what the back test will help you help you decipher. Uh, Tim oh. W says the only caution about the option Omega discord group is that not everyone there is a successful trader and you have to be careful who and what you follow. Steve is a much better trader than, well, thank you, Tim. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, I would, I would fully agree with that, but, uh, and I, and I invite, I, I would extend that not just option Omega, but, uh, really any discord that's not led by educators is, you know, there, there's people to, who are figuring out who are earnest, but. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'll put it this way. I'm not putting on every trade I see in the option to make a discord. I, I really enjoy seeing people think through them. And, and I, I think of it in terms of like a big, uh, options, you know, class where everybody's together talking through ideas more than the, any, uh, any specific, we're not doing trade alerts at the option to make a discord. I'll put it that way. Very cool. All right, guys, we're going to wrap that up. Uh, if you have any other questions, like uh, like I said, you can post them in the Option Omega Discord or you can post them in our backtesting channel in our community. And Troy, thanks again. Always great to have you on and we will do it again in the future. Sounds great. Thanks again. All right, take care, everybody.